painted by the Limburg brothers for the Duke of Berry. This is one of the greatest illustrated manuscripts from the medieval world, the Très Riche Air, a book of hours. It presents prayers for each hour of the day. As an artwork made for the Duke of Berry, it also celebrates the luxuries and sophistication of court life. It is designed to delight, flatter, and amuse the patron. Life at the Duke's court is the subject of the secular scenes that portray the seasons. Zodiac signs at the top track the cycle of months. The ancient Greek deity Apollo rides his great chariot, carrying the sun across the sky. The Limburg brothers honor the Duke's passion for art. A major art collector, he spent so freely on art that when he died, his estate lacked funds for an appropriate burial. You can see where the money went. A magnificent tapestry hangs in the background, depicting armored knights in battle. The tables are crowded with gold-plated metalwork. The room vibrates with gorgeous color, luxurious materials, and splendid workmanship. Equally appreciated in the ducal courts were sophisticated games and witty jokes. Look at the courtier dressed in blue, examining a golden vessel at the left. The vessel's round opening is positioned in line with the gold dagger that protrudes erect from his pelvis. As an aficionado of art, the Duke loves games of illusions. The figures of armored knights in the tapestry image seem to flow into the room, blurring the boundary between art and life. The Limburg brothers understand that their job is to celebrate the glamour of his court life, feed his sophistication, and reflect his privilege back to him. Turning from the January gift-giving ceremonies of the Christmas holidays to February, the Limburg brothers take the viewer outside the court. We are transported to snowy farmlands, where peasants toil among the animals and plants. One bends to hew firewood. Inside the barn, three warm themselves at a fire. Two have casually lifted their garments above their thighs, exposing their genitals to view. The Limburg brothers knew that the Duke would have found this scene amusing. The question to ask is why? What was the relationship in the 1400s between life in the courts and life on the fields? What inferences can we make about those two worlds based on the Limburg brothers' paintings? The Duke wasn't just a collector of gold pictures, tapestries, and books. He also had an enormous collection of castles and the land associated with those castles. Pages in the Très Riche Air are portraits of his various castles, such as this one, the Château de Lusignan. Its land worked by laboring peasants to increase his wealth. The poor people are seen as like beasts of burden, like the oxen. Here in April, outside the Duke's Château de Dordon, nobles are enjoying a stroll. A young couple exchange rings. Look carefully at their bodies, movements, postures, expressions, as well as their clothing and hats. What have the Limburg brothers done to contrast them with the laborers? How do these Noble men and women exemplify court culture, as described by Castiglione. Here in May, we see young nobles riding in procession. What would Castiglione say about their attire and manners? Look at the clothing. So much ultra-fine fabric. Behind them, we see through the treetops the roofline of another ducal property. This one, his Paris residence, is called L'Hôtel de Nestlé. The portraits of castles are like a real estate portfolio. June shows the Palais de la Cité in Paris, the Saint-Chapelle visible at right. Peasants work the land. In the previous picture, aristocratic ladies wore long dresses as courtly conduct demanded. Here, the working women hitch up their skirts, showing their calves and bare feet. In the background, we can see the underwear of the men who strain in the hot sun to cut the grass. The Limburg brothers love to expose working people's nether parts in the tree riche airs. Doing so allows them to suggest that working people are vulgar. Vulgar means both of the common people and lewdly unmannered. 
The, Lin the Lindbergh brothers know that their aristocratic viewers see the peasantry in both ways. In July, we watch the sheep shearing happening in front of the Duke's palace at Poitiers. The Lindbergh brothers are so good at socially significant details that we can distinguish between the people doing the shearing and those doing the harder grunt work of cutting grass with sickles. Even among the peasantry, there is a subtle class difference depending on the kind of labor you do. Here it is August, and we see the Duke's Chateau des Tempes in the background, the noble men and ladies riding out on their elegant, beautiful horses are, go, are on a falconry expedition. Look here in this scene how we have the contrast between the courtly culture in the foreground and the peasant culture in the background. What's going on in the river? It is September now, and we are witnessing the harvest of the grapes, the peasants in the fields. One can be seen popping grapes into his mouth. In the background is the Duke's amazingly grand Chateau du Sommet. Once again, if we look closely at the little details, the Lindbergh brothers are teasing and tickling the classist imagination of the Duke by showing him his peasants bending over and look at their butt is exposed. Ha ha ha, says the Duke. October and the fields are being tilled. The background castle is the Louvre. So this is again, courtly life compared to peasant life. But we can also see this scene as a prime example of the growing interest in closely observing nature. Notice that the birds are specifically and accurately a species, and the granular texture of tilled soil is meticulously described. We see that study of nature in this November scene of the acorn harvest, with pigs feeding on acorns. The artists use all of their virtuosity to, to describe the texture of the pig's hair, features of their anatomy, so different from a dog's anatomy, and to make every leaf on the oak trees seem true to life. 